good morning to all and welcome back to today's video session and today the video lecture is the natural frequency of free longitudinal vibrations so here the natural frequency the number of cycles per unit time we are going to call as the frequency that's happening the naturally after the initial displacement that motion of the particle by repeating itself is going to be the we are calculating that frequency and the free longitudinal vibrations in this case the particle of the the particle of the motion will takes place along the longitudinal axis of the member then we can say that is the longitudinal vibrations to understand this one i am going to be taking the one of the mathematical concepts that is going to be equilibrium method what is the equilibrium method in this case we are adopting we are borrowing that the technology uh, technique of this the alpert principle so in this the alpert principle so we are framing this sigma f is equal to mv the algebraic sum of the all the dynamic forces acting on the system is equal to zero the net dynamic forces acting on the system is equal to zero then we can say that is going to be the d'alembert principle that's we are writing mathematically sigma f is equal to mv in this case sigma f is going to be the the number of loads are acting on the system and this is going to be the that's equal to mass into acceleration the same equations i'm going to be writing in terms of sigma f minus ma equal to 0 so from this equations we are going to be developing the equation of motion of the vibrations so come to the point here i'm going to be taking a simple system here one spring i have taken and the mass i have taken the spring has the stiffness of the k and the mass has the m is going to be representing the mass and some of the terminology i'm going to explain here the k is the stiffness of the spring and del is going to be the static deflection of the spring and x is the displacement of the spring m is going to be the mass of the body w is going to be the weight of the body so with understanding of this all the terminologies now i am going to be derive the equation of motion for this uh, simple spring and mass system so in this case this is the spring it is not loaded with the mass that means the spring and the mass are two are separated elements we kept it then what happen in the next step i am going to be adding the mass to that spring so then what will happen this is going to be the initial position of the spring that is the total length of the spring is going to be the l it is going to be maintained so then in the next step i am going to be adding the mass to that spring so this is going to be the spring when i was added the mass for this to system so then what, what will happen the spring is going to be started elongating in the downward direction because of the gravitational force so then there we can see so this is going to be your mass that was added to the spring so what is the initial position of the spring that is going to be the l distance is there but after you are attaching the mass to the spring at the one end so then this is going to be the the distance it was elongated that i am going to be representing with the del so in this case i haven't apply the force on that system rather than i was attached the mass to the spring then it was elongated that elongation i am going to be say the static deflection of the spring right in the static deflection of the spring so then what will happen so then i am going to be taking the static deflection of the system means here the spring and the mass system i am going to be taking the sigma f equal to 0 the net forces acting on the system is equal to 0 then the, i am going to be draw the free body diagram for this position so i am going to say this is the position 1 and this is the position 2 for the position 2 i am going to draw the free body diagram so that's going to be free body diagram for the mass is going to be m m so then what will happen in this case when the mass is going to consist of the weight and it is acting in the downward direction so that i am going to be representing the weight of the system is going to be w so that is equal to m g right then what will happen so in this case the mass is move, pulling in the downward direction and it is attached to the spring the spring is going to be internal forces are going to be generating so the internal forces are developed in terms of elastic or the strain energy of the system as we see that how it is going to be started elongating from the mean position and to the next position so in this case i am going to be show that force is acting in the opposite direction that i am going to be representing fs 
Fs is nothing but the spring force. The spring force that is equal to here. What is the formula we are getting? It is going to be stiffness into static deflection of the spring. So, with the help of this, Unspent some of the forces acting on the system, sigma f equal to 0, that I am going to be taking the two forces. One force is acting in the upward direction, one force acting in the downward direction. The upward direction I am going to be taking as a positive, downward direction I am going to be taking as a negative. Right? So then what happened here? That is going to be Fs is equal to W. From this equation, I am going to be substituting these values. That's going to be K del is equal to mg. So it is going to be very clear to our minds that in the static deflection, the weight of the system, weight of the mass is equal to the static deflection of the spring. And the same thing, I am going to be writing K by M is equal to Z by Z. So from this one, I am going to be writing K by M and Z by Z. This equation we are using in the next level, the derivation of our equation. So I hope we understand this one, the static deflection of the spring, when the spring is going to be loaded with mass and it has shifted to the, that means the spring is started elongating in the downward direction. That means internal forces are developed inside the system, that is in terms of elastic or the strain energy. So that equation we have derived with the help of the free body diagram, right? So then, in this case, after the position 2, I am going to be applying the load. So that means, Initial displacement I am providing to that system. So then that system is going to be F force I am going to apply. This force is only applicable for the initial displacement. After that, I am going to be removing. Once you apply the force in this direction, so then I am going to be draw the third position of the spring mass system. So then the spring started elongating in the downward direction. This is the mass, right? And, and I'm going to be taking here the position of this one. And can you see the position of this one? So this position, it was elongated x distance, right? Because the initial displacement I have given, the spring started elongating x distance. And this is going to be the position, and the initial position is going to be the initial position, right? The main position and Final position. See, then what happened? Once I am going to remove this load, then this mass is going to be moving in the upward direction and downward direction. Up and downward direction it is going to move. That means that motion is going to be repeated in equal interval of time. So then we can say that is the vibrations. So there is no external load acting on that. Then we can say that is going to be the free longitudinal vibration. There we can see here this up and downward motions are happening along the longitudinal axis of the spring. So then it is going to be the longitudinal vibration and there is no force acting after initial displacement then we can say that is the free natural frequency system we are going to be saying. So for this one I want to derive the dynamic deflection of the system. So I want to derive the equation of motion. So again I am going to draw the free body diagram with the help of the Albert principle I am going to be deriving that equation. So for this position I am going to be taking the, the uh, free body diagram. So then here, this is going to be the mass of the system, right? So then, what are the forces acting on that system here? As we know that, from this free body diagram, we understand that there is a spring force is there, self weight of the system is going to be acting. So that I am going to be taking as it is here, the self weight of the system is going to be the W, and Fs is going to be the spring force. And what else it is acting on this one? What other forces are acting on that system? So then what happened? When the object is trying to move, from this position to the this position, the accelerating force is acting in the downward direction. But if the inertia force is going to be, which side it is going to be acting? It is opposite force it is going to be acting. So that means here F A, I am going to be taking, this is going to be your accelerating force. The rather than accelerating forcing, I am going to be taking the inertia force. Because here I am going to be taking, this is the resistance force developed inside the spring. And inertia force is going to be acting in the opposite direction, which try to oppose the motion of the mass. Right? So then these are the equations. So from this equation, I am going to be writing here the forces acting in the upward direction as well as the downward direction. So in this case, so that's going to be Fi is going to be the inertia force is acting on the system, plus Fs is going to be the spring force acting that is equal to weight of the system. 
So then I'm going to be substituting. What is the Fi? Already we know Fa is equal to mass into acceleration. So that I'm going to be taking mass into acceleration of this body. Right? So that is equal to plus what is the Fs? Fs is going to be k into del. That means stiffness into deflection. But when it comes to here, what is the deflection of this spring? Not with this deflection, del plus x we are going to be taking. K into del plus x. Del plus x that is equal to mg. Right? And we know the deflection that static deflection of the spring is equal to self weight of the system. In this case, k del is there and mg is there. So these two are going to be vanished. And final equation, I am going to be writing m into acceleration k into x is equal to 0. And this is called equation of motion. Right? In this equation of motion is going to be describing the system, how it is going to be behaving for particular natural vibrations. Okay, once we calculate the equation of motion that is going to mass into acceleration plus the stiffness of the spring that is equal to zero. In this case, as we understand that when the spring is going to be started vibrating from its mean position to the downward and upward directions, so then that we the motion of the particle we are going to be say that is the simple harmonic motion. So that means the motion of the mass and the spring system is following the simple harmonic motion. So that is going to be SHM I am going to be considering. So for this one, the displacement of the spring or the mass, the x is equal to, I am going to be taking A into sine omega t. Right? And this is going to be x into A sine omega t. Right? And this is going to be the displacement of the spring and the mass is following the simple harmonic motion. So from this one, I am going to be deriving with respect to the time. So then what I am going to be getting? The dx by dt, that's I'm going to be showing with the single dot, that's equal to a into omega cos omega t, right? And then again derivative, uh, derivation with respect to time of this velocity, that I'm going to get in the acceleration. That is equal to minus a omega square sine omega t, right? And simplifying this acceleration, that is equal to minus a, that is going to be omega square a sine omega t I am going to say that x this is going to be the simple harmonic motion that means the acceleration always acting towards the mean position and proportional to the its distance so I am going to be substituting this so I am going to change this is the equation 1 and this is the equation 2, 3 and 4 I am going to be taking the equation 2 and 4 and substituting in the equation 1 Substitute two four in equation one. So then, what I'm going to be getting here? That's going to be mass into acceleration. What's the acceleration? Minus of a omega square sine omega t, right? That's in the bracket plus k into a sine omega t is equal to 0, right? This is the equation we are getting. So after the simplification, sin omega t, sin omega t is going to be cancelled. A, A is going to be the maximum amplitude of that vibrations is going to be cancelled. From this equation, I am going to be getting minus m omega square that is equal to plus k equal to 0. After the simplification, this equation, that's going to be omega is equal to omega is equal to k by m square root integrated. Right? And this is the omega. So this omega we are going to be called circular frequency. So this omega is going to be called circular frequency. So this is the circular frequency we have derived. What is the time period? That means that motion of the particle which repeats in the equal interval of time. That equal interval of time is called the time period. So that I am going to be taking here is the time period. Pp 
is equal to what's the formula we are going to get in 2 pi by omega n so this symbol is representing the omega n so if i am going to be substituting this omega 1 value in this equation so what i am going to get in 2 pi square root of m by k will be it so this is the equation we got because of the natural circular frequency the time period we have received next one we are deriving the natural frequency what is the natural frequency that's representing with the f letter so that's f is equal to what is the formula we do have 1 by 2 pi into omega n right and that simplification 2 pi square root of k by n this is the way we can calculate the natural frequency or free frequency we are going to be calculating with the help of this one and we do have the one formula that is going to f is equal to 1 by time period also because the time period is reciprocal to the natural frequency of the system i hope you understand what is the natural frequency of the free longitudinal vibration in this case we have taken the simple system spring and mass right we do have seen the different terminologies what we are using here in this case we do have taken the two positions the first position is going to be without the addition of the mass to the spring we have taken after the certain time we added the mass to the system and that elongation of that that one is going to be static reflection for the static reflection of the spring we have taken and we derived that is going to be static deflection of the spring is equal to the self weight of the system right and this is going to be completed after that we given an initial mark initial force to that system then that system is going to be started moving up and down downward direction that means the vibrations started after we are removing the initial position initial forces so then we derive the deflection of a spring for the dynamic condition then equation of motion we calculated that is equal to m mass into acceleration plus k into x equal to zero from this one the x is going to be the displacement of the system or the spring that i am going to be taking as during as that motion is a single harmonic motion x is equal to a sin omega t once i am going to derive velocity on the acceleration right and this is the simplified form then i substituted equation 4 and 2 in the equation 1 so then i got it here is going to be the circular frequency omega n is equal to k by m next one is the time period we calculated next one natural frequency that is equal to omega n by 2 pi so that is going to 1 by 2 pi square root of k by m is going to be your natural frequency of a spring and mass system i hope you understand this one thank you